Pandas, how to read and write files. Pandas is a powerful and flexible Python package that allows you to work with labeled and time series data. It also provides statistics methods, enables plotting, and much more. One crucial feature of Pandas is its ability to write and read Excel, CSV, and many other file types. Functions like the Pandas read CSV method enable you to work with files effectively. You can use them to save the data and labels from Pandas objects to a file and load them later as Pandas series or data frame instances. In this course, you'll learn how to read and write data to and from files, what the Pandas IO Tools API is, how to work with various file formats, and how to work with big data efficiently. Now you know what's coming up, let's get started. Installing Pandas and preparing data. The code in this course is executed with Python 3.9 and Pandas 1.2.5. It's generally considered best practice to work in a virtual environment when you're working with any new package. And if you're not sure how to do this, check out this real Python course. First things first, you'll need the Pandas library. You can install it with the line seen on screen. Once the installation process is complete, you should have Pandas installed and ready to use within Python. In this course, you'll use the data related to 20 countries. Here's an overview of the data and sources you'll be working with. Country is denoted by the country name. Each country is in the top 10 list for either population, area, or gross domestic product. The row labels for the data set are the three letter country codes defined in ISO 31661. The column label for the data set is country. Population is expressed in millions. The data comes from a list of countries and dependencies by population on Wikipedia. The column label for the data set is pop. Area is expressed in thousands of kilometers squared. The data comes from a list of countries and dependencies by area on Wikipedia, and the column label for the data set is area. Gross domestic product is expressed in millions of US dollars, according to United Nations data for 2017. This data was also sourced from Wikipedia, and the column label for the data set is GDP. Continent is either Africa, Asia, Oceania, Europe, North America, or South America. This information is also from Wikipedia, and the column label for the data set is CONT. Independence Day is a date that commemorates a nation's independence. The data comes from the list of national independence days on Wikipedia and the dates are shown in ISO 8601 format. The first four digits represent the year, the next two numbers are the month and the last two are the day of the month. The column label for the data set is ind underscore day. This is how the data looks as a table. You may notice that some of the data is missing. For example, the continent for Russia is not specified because it spreads across both Europe and Asia. There are also several missing independence days because the data source omits them. This data can be organized in Python using a nested dictionary. Each row of the table is written as an inner dictionary whose keys are the column names and the values of the corresponding data. These dictionaries are then collected as the values in the outer data dictionary. The corresponding keys for data are the three letter country codes. Now while you could type the contents of this dictionary manually, it's probably going to be easier and more accurate if you download the included course files, open up data.py in a text editor, copy the contents and then paste them into the REPL, as seen on screen. You can use this data to create an instance of a pandas data frame. First, you'll need to import pandas, and here you can see it being imported using the traditional alias of pd. Now that pandas is imported, you can use the data frame constructor and data to create a data frame object. The data is organized in such a way that the country codes correspond to columns. You can reverse the rows and columns of a data frame with the property .t, as seen at the end of the line on screen. Now you have your data frame object populated with information about each country, so you're ready to start working with files. And the first format you'll be looking at is CSV. 
reading and writing CSV files. A comma separated values file is a plain text file with a .csv extension that holds tabular data and it's one of the most popular file formats for storing large amounts of data. Each row of the CSV file represents a single table row. By default, the values in the same row are separated with commas, but you could change the separator to a semicolon, tab, space, or any other character. You can save your pandas data frame as a CSV file using the toCSV method as seen on screen. That's it. You've created the file data.csv in your current working directory, and you can see its contents on screen now. This text file contains the data separated with commas. The first column contains the row labels. In some cases, you'll find them irrelevant. If you don't want to keep them, then you can pass the argument index equals false to .csv as seen on screen. Once your data is saved in a CSV file, you'll likely want to load and use it from time to time. You can do that using read CSV as seen on screen. In this case, the pandas read CSV function returns a new data frame with the data and labels from the file data.csv, which was specified in the first argument. This string can be any valid path, including URLs. The parameter index col specifies the column from the CSV file that contains the row labels and is set using a zero base column index. You should set the value of index col when the CSV file contains the row labels to avoid loading them as data. You'll learn more about using pandas with CSV files later on in the course, but you can also check out reading and writing CSV files in Python to see how to handle CSV files with the built-in Python library CSV as well. Next up, you'll see how to read and write Excel files. Reading and writing Excel files. Microsoft Excel is probably the most widely used spreadsheet software. While older versions use binary .xls files, Excel 2007 introduced the new XML-based .xlsx file. You can read and write Excel files in Pandas, similar to CSV files. However, you'll need to install the following Python packages first. xlwt to write to .xls files. OpenPyXL or XLSX writer to write to .xlsx files. XLRD to read Excel files. You can install them using pip with a single command. Please note that you don't have to install all these packages, although doing so will allow you to get started with the minimum of fuss. For example, you don't need both OpenPyXL and XLSX Writer, and if you're only ever going to write XLSX files, then you may want to just use XLSX Writer. If you're only going to work with the older binary Excel files, then you'll want to use the appropriate packages depending on if you'll be reading, writing, or both. Take some time to decide which packages are right for your project, and if you're deploying an application, then only install the packages you'll actually be using. Once you have those packages installed, you can save your data frame in an Excel file with the toExcel method, as seen on screen. The argument data.xlsx represents the target file, and optionally, its path. The statement you've seen on screen should create the file data.xlsx in your current working directory. Opening it up in Excel, it should look like this. The first column of the file contains the label of the rows, while the other columns store data. You can load data from Excel files with the read Excel function. Read Excel returns a new data frame that contains the values from data.xlsx. You can also use Read Excel with Open Document Spreadsheets or ODS files. 
you'll learn more about working with Excel files later on in this course. You can also check out Using Pandas to Read Large Excel Files in Python. In the next section of the course, you'll take a deeper look at how Pandas interacts with files and work with more file types. Working with different file types. The Pandas library offers a wide range of possibilities for saving your data to files and loading data from files. In this section, you'll learn more about working with CSV and Excel files. You'll also see how to use other types of files, such as JSON, web pages, databases, and Python pickle files. So let's get started by taking a look at how Pandas works with files via the IO API.